Hey, what's up guys? This is Blake from Matt Kiteboarding here in Key West, Florida with Rigo filming a kite loop playlist. And today we're gonna be going over a back roll kite loop, which is one of the easiest kite loops that you can do actually, because um, your back roll just naturally pulls you as the kite's looping, which is the same rotation. So all you have to do is just throw your back roll as you regularly would, pull it on your back hand and the kite will loop and pull you into your rotation into your landing and then it all kind of just comes together. Don't forget, with these videos, we do write them all out for you. So just click the eye icon in the top corner of your screen. You can uh, download that PDF file. We also have all of our favorite kite looping kites included in there. So check out that in the eye icon and let's get to it. So I'm sure a lot of you, if you've tried back rolls before, you've accidentally done back roll kite loops. And this is a very easy trick, but it's also a very scary trick. And a lot of people have fear about it because their experiences of learning back rolls and accidentally doing a kite loop where you, you go one way and you're upside down, the kite crashes in the water and it smashes you down. So, but a lot of you probably have been surprised that, wow, I accidentally did a back roll kite loop one time and I landed it, but I had no idea what I was doing. So for the first time when you were trying back rolls and you accidentally did them, um, probably had, maybe had some success, maybe didn't, but you weren't even trying them and you were able to do them. So it's just a natural thing to do a back roll and pulling on, pulling on your back hand. So if you just go into it knowing what to expect, what to do, and just that you need to fully commit, once you're fully committed for this trick and you do it a couple times, you'll be like, wow, this is the easiest trick I probably know. Because especially if you do it underpowered, if you do this trick underpowered, and just in light winds, it'll just pick you up, spin you around, pull you into your landing, and just keep going. The first step for a back roll kite loop is to fly with a small kite first. Uh, the reason you wanna fly with a small kite is that you don't wanna catch a bunch of air. You want to maybe be one to five feet um, to start. Because if you get 10 feet in the air and you're doing this, then the crashes are going to be hard. I would recommend trying your first kite loop on something an 11 meter or smaller. If you're low to the water, it doesn't matter, but the smaller your kite, the easier it will be to catch you and loop around and give you that lift. So bigger kites, you're going to have a much harder landing. So a back roll kite loop is going to be more of an impact and a hard landing. And we have a lot of those videos here for you because we have been looping on like 17s and 15s and all of that. So um, it's possible to do back roll kite loop in any wind condition, any kite size, but we recommend riding a smaller kite size for whatever wind conditions you ride in. Just go enough to stay up wind and ride around, but just not enough to where you're boosting 20 feet into the air. Um, you don't want to learn how to do a back roll kite loop on those days because there's a lot of other things you can learn with down loops and heli loops in those days and then save this back roll kite loop for a nice moderate day. What that does, flying it in light winds, is it allows you to fly a smaller kite which will then be able to catch you and it also allows you to build up your muscle memory of just getting a bunch of underpowered back roll kite loops so that you feel super comfortable. This is a very easy trick, no consequence really if you're doing it in light wind. So you just get the feeling, you get the understanding of them and you start to realize how fun and easy they really are. And then you can start taking it higher and higher to the next level and going big and then you can work your way up to the, some really nice late back roll kite loops, kite below you and all of that. But just take your, take your time, work your way up. So for this playlist, we just got some new Cabrina kites and I've really been enjoying the 11 meter switchblade because it's a nice in between from a 10, which is one of my favorite kite sizes to loop on, and then a 12, which is a little slower and not as easy to loop on. So we chose the 11 meter switchblade specifically for this playlist because we're down here in Key West where it's never really that windy, but it's a nice steady like 15 to 25. Step number two is to widen your grip. And the reason you want to do this is it'll give you a tighter loop. When you crank on the bar, it's going to make the kite loop really fast. And so as you do your back roll, it'll be a bit quicker of a turn, which will then catch you sooner and have a nice smooth landing. The difference between when you're doing a back roll when you're learning 
And what's, when you're doing it now is when you're doing a back roll, just a back roll, take your back hand off of the bar or put your hands in the center of the bar so that your kite doesn't naturally get pulled in the opposite direction and loops. Whereas this one, now we're intentionally going for the loop, so we're gonna widen our grip, give us extra steering and control, so then as we send our body back, you naturally pull down on your back hand, which then cranks on the bar and gives you that loop. Now we're gonna be consciously committing to it and going extra hard, so the wider your hands are, the tighter the loop, and you'll be able to get that around and fully commit. Step number three is to pop, then pull. And it's about as easy as it sounds, is that you pop like you regularly would for a back roll, and then you pull in on the bar and just crank it hard with your back hand. So you want to pop and start traveling upwards in the air, catch some air first, and then pull the bar, because if you pull too soon, what's gonna happen is you're just gonna be really low to the water and that horizontal pull is probably not gonna catch you. Um, so you want to just get like a foot or two off the water, just start popping, catching a little air, and then pull that loop right as you're going up. And the biggest thing is just pull the loop as you're going up rather than as you're coming down. So you want to pop, go up, and then as you're traveling upwards, just somewhere where you're not too high in the air, just pull that loop and then it'll pull you horizontally. So you catch a little height and then you go horizontal. Pop and pull thing is nice because if you do it early, even if you're really powered, uh, if you pull it when you're like a foot or two off the water, you're gonna stay at that height. Whereas if you pull it when you're higher, then you're gonna go really high and then you're gonna go horizontal. So just start low and then do that. Pull up your hand, loop the kite, and it'll pull you horizontally, low over the water, you can land without too much impact. So much like your down loop transitions, um, for this one you're gonna actually be doing like a more of an off axis rotation than a flip. Um, you don't need to get too inverted for this as you're starting out. Just work your way up and get there once you're more experienced. But just for muscle me memory's sake, just like kind of spin around and you're just doing an off axis rotation, holding it on your back hand. And if you feel yourself naturally pulling back on your front hand, what you can do is you can also take your front hand off the bar and just do a back roll and just like hang on just with your back hand. So you don't have to do this, but um, if you find yourself struggling with this at all, um, some easy solution could be just to have your hands wide on the bar, pop, pull, and then just let go with your front hand as you come around. This also gives you a free hand to grab the board if you'd like to, but um, just fully committing hanging onto that bar and not letting go. So do not let go of the bar because the biggest mistake with the kite loop is when you let go. So no matter what, if you're gonna loop the kite, make sure you loop the kite because the kite's going to loop and even if you crash, once it starts shooting back up, then it'll lift you out of the water. Whereas if you start the loop and then you stop and let go of the bar, what's gonna happen is the kite's gonna be making all that momentum and power and then it's going to crash into the water taking you with it. So it's much better to just always fully commit no matter what and the kite will, even if you crash, it'll pick you back up and take you out of the water. So for this trick, it's uh, off axis rotation and it's more of a half rotation than anything because the loop will pull you around into your landing. So you don't really have to worry too much about it. You just have to start getting yourself into the momentum of a back roll. So that's why this one is actually easier than a regular back roll. It's just that you have to commit to it because um, the kite just pulls you into your landing. Whereas with the regular back roll, you have to get your whole body around, pull in on your front hand, correct the kite, and then land. With this one, everything just flows so smoothly, fluid, and just you and the kite rotate together. As the kite comes around, you come around, prepare for landing, and you're good to go. Step number four is to spot your landing. And with the back roll, it's much easier to spot your landing than a front roll. With the front roll, you're blind most of the time with your back to the landing. Whereas with the back roll, you get that initial blindness in the first quarter of your rotation. And then once you get around, then you just keep your eyes open, look over your shoulder, and then you'll be able to spot your landing. And just like we said in all these videos, spotting your landing is very important because just like any sport, wherever your head and your shoulders go, your body will follow. So if you're looking over here, but wanting to land over here, then it's not gonna work out so well. And just like the analogy we used of uh, a pilot landing on an airstrip, um, you gotta be looking at the runway that you're landing on in order to land. 
and you have to be able to land flat and smooth. You don't want to be looking over here trying to land on the airship down there because it just doesn't make sense. So just really make a conscious effort of spotting your landing, focusing on downwind of you where you're going to be coming down, prepare for a landing. Just remember to absorb the impact of your body as a shock and usually the kite loop will do a bit to help catch you and give you a soft landing. Step number five is to land flat with your board downwind and this is the basic step for all kite loops and all tricks as it is but it's just very important in this trick because you don't want to land on an edge back roll. It's easy with a back roll to land on an edge because naturally swinging around and just kind of coming back leaning back a little bit. So if you make a conscious effort to land flat with your board downwind there won't be those hard falls onto your butt or catching your toe side edge and going over. Just remember to get your shoulders over your knees over the board. And what I mean by this is if your board is flat but your body's behind it, what's gonna happen is your board will land but then your body's still gonna come crashing into the water. So you want to have your body over top of the board so that as you come down, you land flat, pull in on the kite and you can ride away. Um, as you get this trick dialed in, the kite will loop more and more and you can uh, mess around with the timing of it all but you should be able to get the kite to catch you especially if you start doing it in a little bit higher winds and once you start getting that kite to catch you you'll have a really soft landing you'll be able to land smooth and then you can go ahead and add a heli loop to it if you like or um, down loop anything to soften your landing make it a bit easier for you so don't forget to click that eye icon in the top corner of your screen. We write all these things out for you so you can have that free PDF file. Also we have our kite looping kites that we recommend. So that's it. We hope you guys enjoy and get out there doing some back roll kite loops. As always, give us a thumbs up, let us know what you think, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Peace!